This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. It's been a while since I've presented Hilaire Belloc on this channel. For those who might not know who he was, if you've never heard of him, Belloc was one of the great lay writers of Catholicism in the early 20th century. He was an Englishman who was a good friend of G.K. Chesterton, and they bounced ideas off each other all the time. But Belloc was known for his prowess as a historian, though he did have a particular blind spot to certain rather unsavory aspects of late 18th century French history, due to his not only being an Englishman, but also being a Frenchman. But he was also a skilled poet and a social commentator. I admire Hilaire Belloc's contributions to Catholic thought to such a degree that the image I use for my channel is just a stylized Hilaire Belloc in sunglasses, though I'm certain he never wore sunglasses himself. His piece I have for you today is his essay titled simply, on irony, and is a good response to those who say we must be nice and not be meanie poo poo headed trads to the people we should pray for, meaning the modernists and Francis and the rest of them. Belloc rather explicitly says that irony is a tool meant to show the absurdity of evil in a given situation. I'll have some more thoughts on this after his essay, so I present On Irony by Hilaire Belloc. Irony is that form of jest in which we ridicule a second person in the presence of a third. It is most complete when the second person is most ignorant of our intention, the third person most alive to it. And irony exists and is full when the third person is restricted to our own expectant selves, or even to God who made us, and in whom is mirrored the universal truth of things. Irony enjoys an exuberant life, whether the second person so attacked is universal, and the third as restricted as can be, or whether the second person so attacked is particular and singular, and the third person, the onlooker and the audience, comprehends the whole world. It is in the intention of irony that it should do good, because it is of the nature of irony that it should avenge the truth. I say avenge because irony would not be irony were it not destined to inflict a mortal or at least grievous wound. There is not in any way measure of pity for the enemy, though irony could not exist without some vast motive of pity, for a victim in whose defense it was aroused. Irony is a sword, and it must be used as a sword. It has this quality about it, like some fairy sword. It cannot be used with any propriety save in God's purpose. And those who have been the most expert swordsmen, when they take a wrong reward for their service, or use that weapon for an unworthy end, find it fail in their hands. Nay, like any fairy sword, in hands that use it unworthily, it will disappear. And the history of letters is full of men who, tempted by this or by that, by money or by ease, or by random friendship, or by some appetite lower than the hunger and thirst after justice, have found their old strong irony grow limp and fruitless after they had sold their souls. Irony, therefore, is unknown in those societies where the love of ease dominates all men. It is most powerful in those societies which are by their temper military. You will find irony treated angrily, as though it were an acid or a poison, where men love ease, and you will find it merely ignored when men have wholly lost the sense of justice. In such societies it retires from the realm of letters, to that more powerful sphere in which divine vengeance and divine necessity have their action over things. In many such a society, no longer capable of producing or of appreciating irony, when it proceeds from the mouth or the pen of a man, learn it most dreadfully in the catastrophes of war. To the young, the pure, and the ingenious, irony must always appear to have in it a quality of something evil, and so it has, for as I have said, it is a sword to wound. It is directly the product or reflex of evil that, though it can never be used, nay, can hardly exist, save in the chastisement of evil, yet irony always carries with it some reflection of the bad spirit against which it was directed. How false it is to say that vengeance and the hatred of evil are in themselves evil, all human history can prove. Nay, but for irony in the last times of a decline, no breath would remain to be to man. Nevertheless, as it is called into being by evil things, it is work in an evil light. It suggests most powerfully the evil against which it is directed, and those innocent of evil shun so terrible an instrument. Alone of the powers of expression possessed by human spirit wherewith to defend right against wrong, irony is invulnerable and alone of those powers it can always strike. Nor is anything invulnerable against it, save the death of the intelligence which comes so short after the death of society suffering it, that there is no need in the interval to attack the evil of that society, or attempt to remedy it. For when stupidity come upon us, a state is all over. 
a happy world such as the world of children or any society of men who have still preserved the the fundamental integrity of the soul such a society as may be found in many mountain valleys needs none of this salt for the preservation of morals but even where men have so protected the primal virtue old men old proverbs dim records of past misfortunes leave some savor of irony in the traditions of the tribe and irony is proved native to the scheme of things and not in its own self unnatural or rebellious by the manner in which the mere course of human happenings is perpetually filled with it a dreadful irony is present when a man having heard of the death of a friend receives later his living letter posted from far off before that death there is irony when every defense having been made against some natural accident that accident yet enters by another gate unsuspected to man there is an irony in every unfulfilled prophecy and in every lengthy and worthless calculation no man having purchased an honor of defends unpurchased honor without the spirit of irony surrounding all his words no man praises courage being himself but a rhetorician or praises justice being himself a lawyer or a magistrate without some savor of irony in the air of his audience and it may be presumed without too much fantasy that spirits equal and undisturbed and of a high intelligence can see in every action of human life save the most holy an irony as strong as that which inhabits the tragedies of the great poets there is a last use of irony or rather a last aspect of it which this general irony of nature and of nature's god suggests i mean that irony which can only appear in the letters of a country when corruption has gone so far that the mere truth is vivid with ironical power for there comes a time it is brief as must be all final moments of decay but there comes a time in the moral disruption of a society when the mere utterance of a plain truth laboriously concealed by hypocrisy denial denied by contemporary falsehood and forgotten in the moral lethargy of the populace takes upon itself an ironical quality more powerful than any elaboration of special ironies could have taken in the past some truth too widely put aside and quietly thrust forward a detail in general conversation about a powerful man strikes in such societies exactly like the point of a spear blood flows and the blood is drawn by irony yet was here no act nor any fabric of words mere testimony to the truth was enough and this should prove that irony is in touch with the divine and is a minister to truth in such awful moments in the history of a state that makes that which makes the dreadful jest is not the jester but the eternal principle of truth itself that which is jested at is the whole texture of the universal society upon which the truth falls for the audience for the third person who shall see the jest at the second person's expense there is present nothing less than the power by which truth is such effect among men no man possessed of irony and using it has lived happily nor is any man possessing it and used it died without having done great good to his fellows and secured a singular advantage to his own soul and there it is so remember when faced with evil it is okay to be strident at times as long as what you're saying is true irony relies on a truth being pointed out that makes what is being critiqued clearly absurd there are many other examples of this from the church including pius x's rather famous lines about how the best response to the modernists involved the use of fists and not soft words which he said in one of his private letters he was rather a meany rigid poo-poo headed trad himself these are all things worth remembering in our time when the modernists themselves obfuscate the truth with sweet-sounding falsehoods to the point where they've obscured the faith with a dark parody of it as is often the case i think belloc helped provide some clarity on this issue now let me know what you thought about this in the comments please and as always pray for the church i'm anthony stein ave maria